Good afternoon everyone at the Summer School and members of the Triple ID community. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to explain a little about our work at TDL and reflect on some of the most prolific DIY graphic creators, our clients. My name is Oliver Tomlinson and I'm the founder and CEO of TDL Creative, an information design agency based in Richmond in the southwest of London. I live on a six acre small holding just over the Welsh border in a county called Powys, balancing my time between TDL, family duties, breeding and flying falcons and looking after 18 sheep. Our core specialism at TDL is designing diagrams for our clients to use in their bids when they're pitching for large contracts. These bids are often worth millions of pounds to our clients and the contracts can go on for years. So obviously, they are a key element to keeping the large corporate wheels turning by providing a healthy pipeline of work. In the UK, there are bids going on all the time all over the country for things like getting you from A to B, providing safe and enjoyable spaces or keeping you well. In a recent presentation to students at the University of Reading, I provided an example of the sort of bid we might with. National Highways is a UK government body that manages the strategic road network in England, with the country split into different areas. So National Highways manages these roads, but doesn't actually deliver the work on them. Fixing potholes and maintaining the roads, looking after all the roadside signs, cutting the verges and fixing the road after accidents, all gets done by private companies who've won the contract to do that for a number of years. Area 3 is the area that Reading sits inside, with a company called Kia Highways maintaining that area. Kia have had that contract since 2008 and last year won it again for another eight years worth £190 million, taking their contract to 2029. They've won the contract by going through a tender process. This is where National Highways, the customer, puts out a tender document explaining what they want done, where they want it done and potentially how they want it doing. The private companies or contractors prepare a bid response answering those questions providing evidence on why they might be the best for the job and, of course, costing it all up. The answers to these questions is where TDL comes in, helping our clients present their solutions in a graphical way to ensure the reader, their customer, understands the content fully and hopefully awards them maximum marks. That's if our clients got it right in the first place. To understand why our clients might be using diagrams, it's worth looking at a typical bid question. This customer has actually defined a diagram in their question, an organogram, and asked to identify key people and CVs too. The obvious solution to this is an org structure with highlights representing key posts and potentially cross-referencing to the CVs. But this might not be the only graphical element that could be used in answering this question. We'll come back to this in a moment, but for now, I'd like to talk about gardening. There are a number of people in the UK who are lucky enough to own an outdoor space with their house. They might have access to tools, seeds, plants and books to make a garden in their spare time. And they might have some knowledge on certain plants to use in certain applications. However, these people are likely to have a skill set somewhere else. They could create a garden with the tools they have, but does that make them a garden designer? My wife is a full-time director at a housing association, but she's also a very keen gardener. When we moved to our small holding, she commissioned a garden designer to help her plan our garden layout. My wife had the tools to do it herself, but understood the limit of her skills and experience. So she worked with the expert to develop a suitable garden design for us to use as a family. We, as a family, are the content experts of the garden, as we live here and know how we want to use it. The garden designer would never understand the space as well as us but they could use their skills, best practice and knowledge of gardens in other areas to bring new ideas 
that enable us to maximise the potential and enjoyment of the space. A collaborative approach between garden user and garden creator. When our clients are creating graphics within their organisations, they're like you or I creating a garden with the tools we have available to us. We could create something that's adequate to our needs, but if we want something that's truly fit for purpose, then we need to collaborate with an expert who has the knowledge and skills to really make the content shine. Our clients are experts in their field and we are the experts in ours, but it only works if we ask lots of questions and the clients trust us to use the best methods to communicate their information. It takes confidence for a designer to question a client, especially if they're ahead of a multi-billion pound organisation, but we find the clients appreciate it most of the time and the outcome is better and created quicker. So let's take another look at the bid question we discussed a moment ago and how an information designer might assess it. We pointed out that there was obviously going to be an organisation chart, but they also want to know what the team's roles and responsibilities are. Here, you could use a matrix to compare. Note that they've defined a list, which is a typographic solution. They've mentioned time twice, so you might want a diagram illustrating when things might happen, something like a timeline. In the term ensuring, they might be asking to know how something will be done. P the potential solution for this could be a process or a user journey. We'd need to do some more digging into what the works and services are, and also the employer's requirements and concerns, uh, as they might be more things that would benefit a graphical solution. Let's have a look at a few examples. Within construction bids, we often will be given solutions from engineers using the tools that they're used to. These drawings may make perfect sense to another engineer, but other readers may find them difficult to interpret. The solution to this one was to break the diagram down into three phases and provide some shading to highlight what was being changed. Sometimes a step-by-step -step will be easier to understand than popping all the information into one scene. We do enjoy a hand-drawn sketch. Hand-drawn sketches show a real collaboration between author and designer. They prove the author trusts us to do our job and frees them up to focus on the core solution rather than fiddling around with the presentation. Clear labeling and color coding will enable the reader to understand those technical drawings and hopefully the engineer's solution to the challenges highlighted in the tender questions. Now I love examples like this one. The black boxes are redacted information, by the way. It's a do you think you can get all these into one org chart, please? Oh, and it also needs to fit onto one side of A4. My answer is normally, well, can you explain what all these bits mean? To which I normally get the reply, I'm not really sure, it's just always been like this. You can see by all the sticky notes on these PDFs that the design process took a while to understand what was really going on. The final design looks clearer, but it's highlighting a key element hidden by the others and still has space to add maps as an additional aid to understanding the content. As you saw in the previous example, we might get something that looks simple from the start, but once you delve into it and ask a few questions, the solution that's actually required might be more complex. This might be for a number of reasons, but it's normally just that somebody doesn't have the tools or skills to explain themselves properly using graphics. Asking this client what was important to show soon turned into a much more information rich solution. This one only highlights the working window of when the team could carry out their tasks on the London Underground, but also provides a dialogue with the reader of what would be going on at certain times. It's important to remember that these diagrams, along with any text they sit with, must communicate by themselves to the reader, as the expert won't be there to explain them. With absolutely no research or data to back up my claim, 
I surmise that most diagrams in the world are produced by people who are not trained in creating them, using the tools and templates available to them in programs like PowerPoint. I should think that there's thousands of throwaway, short lifespan graphics created every day behind hidden doors, illustrating a multitude of topics that could affect us all, especially as they're being created by organisations who are influential on how our countries work. It would be interesting to know what the effect of an information designer might have on these. Would they provide a different approach and more importantly, would their design process change the resulting outcome?